Welcome back to Bloodburner 412 as we do our 100% walkthrough of Bloodborne. So in our last episode we knocked Jura off this ledge, got his badge, eliminated this huge gun from our playthrough, allowing us to backtrack and collect all the stuff that we ran past when we were dodging all those bullets. So head back down the ladder we climbed to get here. Should top off. We're going to be coming back here um, for the path of progression, but we need to get this stuff and some other stuff, which is going to be extremely helpful late game. So a bunch of guys followed us, so I'm not sure if you guys are still Apparently a lot of them. I'm going to get my torch out. Top off. No sense in dying now. So yeah, the mechanics are important to take note of. So I'm using the torch and the serrated edge, because that works better on beasts. I believe these are beasts. They might not be, but I'm going to assume that they are beasts. Here's where we fought the other NPC, whose name I do not know, because I've never talked to him. this ladder to get an item. Well, actually, we're going to go up there anyway, so... Um, where are we? Uh, yes, because we come out right back there, I think, if I remember correctly, so... So we'll just dip down here. Top off. It is very easy to get overwhelmed in this room, so have your torch out. Uh, it will help keep the monsters at bay. Utilize that fast swing on the sock leader. Oh, you got me. Got some poison in going. Another gemstone. Oh, that one. Well, it's hard to tell because they all are tempering blood gemstone one. So uh, attack 2.1, charge attacks at plus. Well, we'll probably put that one in. I am tempted to keep with the uh, the saw cleaver. Because you don't have to worry about timing quite so much. It does a number on beasts. But... This is what we want. This charred hunter garb is going to do us great, great service. In the last DLC boss of the face. Lawrence, the first victor. Okay. 
easily done. Okay, now we head up this ladder. Clear our, clear our enemies here. Set fire. Oops. Try to keep yourself from getting surrounded. Remember, we ran past all this, so that's why it's bad. Calm down, Turbo. Files. And this is the way back. So if you're nervous about carrying around a bunch of blood echoes, it's not bad to be nervous about that. Um, then this is the way back to the bonfire, or not the bonfire, <laughs> uh, this is the way back to the lamp, which will take you back to Hunter's Dream. We're going to go ahead and continue to advance now that we've cleared out all of the baddies. I just want to show you the way back. Okay, so after you've cleared the baddies, uh, if you haven't used the lamp, you can come here. Uh, and if you end up doing a boss run to the, uh, to, um, let's start beast. Um, this wouldn't actually be the boss run you would take, most likely, but there is a ladder there. And now we're back. We're going to be opening this door shortly. We are back to where we killed Jura. We went up this ladder, and then the next ladder, and that's how we killed Jura. And that's the ladder we took up to Jura. So now we're coming back down to here. Sneak up on this guy with the torch. And now he's dead. Now you want to come in, you want to hit this knotted up thing that's going to drop the chandelier stuff and kill a bunch of enemies down there. Uh, you want to just come in and hit it. And if you don't hit it right away, uh, the, the enemies will wander away from that thing dropping and you won't get them. Alright, so now we are in rafter mode. So like I said in an earlier episode, you just get your camera set and you never touch it again. You just use your left thumbstick. Where you will fall on rafters is when you start uh, messing with the camera. Because you'll overcorrect uh, where you're going. And you don't want to do that. Step off. If you just run off the edge, of course, you'll miss this balcony or catwalk and drop to your death. I'm going to try to get that thing. I've only gotten it once. 
and I got it on my winter marathon, my Bloodborne winter marathon. Basically, you have to sprint and hit your circle button twice to jump over there at an angle. All it is is a messenger ribbon, and I missed it. Um, or a bandage that you can put on your little messenger heads so that they stop doing my punch attack. Okay, I think this weapon will work better on these dudes. Four starts out at 74 per shot. Let's do a little comparison. Yeah, it's only 53. doing so little damage at these, this level, that, you know, the stats aren't really calculating that much into our damage at this point. So head up here. Annihilate this dude. It is, I think, taking less stamina to swing this thing than it is. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six... So I'm getting six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, interesting. So I'm getting more swings with that thing. I've never seriously used the Kirk Hammer. I, I always get the Whirly Gig Saw. Uh, because why wouldn't you want to play with the strongest weapon in the game? For strength. That seems to work pretty well. Walk off the edge. Walk off the edge. And we get a packet. So this Ritual Blood is an item that you will need for Chalice Dungeons. We're not going to spend any time doing Chalice Dungeons on this playthrough. Um, the Chalice Dungeons basically give you materials uh, and upgrades. Just wasn't quite enough to kill these guys, so. See what I did to your buddies? Little bird. Did my little birdie tell you what happens when you mess with a guy with a giant Kirk hammer? Grab the shards. Now we're gonna go get a shortcut. That is the church we were just in. This is gonna be our path of progression. This is going to be our shortcut. Now we've got quite a few uh, blood echoes. Uh, we got our shards for our saw, our saw cleaver. So we're going to head back uh, and level. We don't want to be too profligate with our bold hunter marks, so we're close enough to just run, make this run back. Come up the stairs to the left. We 
We have no problems here because we smashed all of these enemies. A lot quieter now that Jira's dead with his gun and his talking and his yapping. All the enemies are gone. Well, they're all going to respawn except for Jura. Jura is dead forever. As well as the other dude that we killed, the other NPC whose name I have never learned. So we're going to level. We're going to put another level into our saw cleaver. And you always do the weapon first. Do your repairs. You don't want your weapon to break in the middle of battle. So we got our shards for this up to plus three. So we got 126 versus one, or actually it's the, it's the white number, 117 up to 135. Um, and then check your blood gems. So always put your best gems in your main weapon. So that's an upgrade there. Uh, that's going to stay there. So now we'll have another spot over here that we can use. As you go over to the uh, item, you'll see the number physical attack number 117, 117, plus 15, plus 17. The blue number indicates what the weapon's damage output would change to if you put that gem in. Alright. Good, good. Are we going to come here? Grab some levels. Okay, and we're going to continue to level our vitality and endurance up. Our skill's going to stay, I think, at 10. When we get the Whirly Gig saw, it might need to go up a couple points. Um, our strength's going to have to go up to 20, I believe. I have to double-check the stats. But we're a little while away from that. Um, when I stop recording, I will double-check what those stats are so that uh, we'll be prepared when we get there. I'd like to try to avoid having to level after we get the weapon. I want to start using the weapon right when we get it. Of course, unlike the Kirk Hammer. Or the two Kirk Hammers that we got. So we'll be selling one of those Kirk Hammers back. So now we're going to, we're back to our old Yarnum. We are going to uh, flip it here and just sprint all the way through uh, and get a shortcut door. I hate when that guy tags me on the way by. It's just looks like a little too shot. So just run straight on to that ledge where we jumped off. Uh, come slightly to an angle so that you jump down there and don't receive any fall damage. We don't have to go past all of the other garbage that we had to go through on our runs here to four. And then we're going to use our shortcut door that we opened. Did I just run past it? Yes, I did. Here it is. We're going to descend our ladder. And we're back to where our action is. So it took about two minutes to run all the way back. All right, now we're going to have a couple enemies in this room. Uh, you want to come to this corner and run, because there's a wandering nightmare uh, right here. So you can get him before all the baddies attack you. If you don't get him, that's not a problem. Just kill the bad guys. Unload, reload, but he gives three blood shards. We'll need 16 for when we get the Whirly Gig Saw, 
so that we can start leveling that up. Alright, it's a couple wolves. By now, uh, you should be a little more comfortable with them. Uh, oh, there's an item back here. To one of the most useless doors in the game, which is this one, which we'll be opening uh, further on in our adventure. Uh, I don't think I've ever utilized that door. Basically, you can skip all of Old Yarnum if you get far enough. My gun did not go up. Hi. Now you notice I've switched back to my saw cleaver because there's a lot of beasts here and uh, the serrated edge does work on the beasts. There's a bad guy up there on the wall who's going to drop down after we run in here and grab these beast blood pellets. I'll be explaining the beast blood pellets in a second. He'll jump on the wall. Didn't do my charge attack, but what can you do? And now we're going to get the shortcut that we're actually going to use in the game. Should think about it well with the beast. Lots of shards. We need 16 of those. I think we'll get more than enough. Bad dude there. Dispatch him. Head up these spiral staircases. There will be a, a passage to the left that you want to take on the way up. There's a bad guy here. And two more shards. Like I say, you end up with with more than enough blood shards. And here is a door that is going to be the shortcut to the boss. But first, grab your fire paper. So that will give us five fire papers. So you're going to want those on. And I'm going to put on the beast blood pellets. Um, so basically, beast blood... And I'm going to take that off. Um, beast Blood makes you hit harder, and the more you hit, the harder you'll hit, but also the more damage you'll take. So it's kind of um, a risk-reward kind of benefit. So we're going to use that when we, when we crush the... Uh, when we crush Parl. So what I wanted to just show you with this ladder is... Because most likely, if this is your first playthrough, you are going to die a few times to uh, the Dark Beast. Uh, I, I think I've been saying Dark Beast Parl, and he's not the Dark Beast Parl. He is the Blood Starved Beast. My bad. So there's our lantern. Okay, so you'll just come out here. You will drop down, like we did when we got our Hunter's Torch. Drop down to this level, to here, and you'll drop down to here. Take the petty fall damage, and there you go. Now we're back to the spiral staircases. You can do the old drop down dance if you wish. Um, there will be that, that guy will reappear should you die, of course. a bad dude here in the fog. By now I'm sure you're realizing that uh, you have to be cautious. I always come back around this way. You keep running that way, but I want to beat this dog out here. Oops, usually I get a parry off. Now you'll notice he is our first uh, red eye, I think. Red eye. 
wolf enemy, so he's a little bit tougher. But not too bad with our saw cleaver. And you can just run past all these dudes if you're uh, coming at another attack. Run straight to Wandering Nightmare. Pick up those blood shards. Then come back at the item here to Hunter's Marks. And we are ready for the Blood Starved Beast. First, however, we are going to kill these three enemies so that we can bring old uh, Arthur or Albert or I think it's Albert actually along on our adventure with us. Uh, there's supposed to be another dude. Oh, there he is. There's three of those guys you want to kill down here. Now you need insight. I've got three insight. If you look up there in the upper right hand corner where the eyeball is, I've got three insight. So I can use one to call Albert. Alfred, not Albert. He's file blood hunter Alfred. That's the guy we met. Um, down when we were making our way to Old Yard. Okay, so the Blood Star Beast is there. So go ahead and put your fire paper on, hit your Beast Blood palette, get your antidote up, because he will poison you. Uh, you could put on the fa uh, Father Gaspar gear that you bought from the. So you see that meter will increase. I always forget at this level to put in my Punch and Blood Cocktail. Because if you do your Punch and Blood Cocktail, you can get him in the corner. Punch and Blood Cocktail causes them to go to the, through the cocktail. But you see Fire and Beast Pellet just does a number on this dude. He's halfway dead already. Oh. Trying to get a backstab in here. Okay, so we're off. So just fire it up again. We'll top off here. I don't really like fighting him here, but this is where he is, so this is where we'll kill him. Total rage mode. And stay in that corner for some reason. Let's get in. Use your R1s. Try your charge attacks when you're behind him. Get your viscerals. I never fought him back here, but maybe it is easier because he can't bounce around so much. There's a nice trap for me. And Bloodstarved Beast is dead. So you get the Chalice for the Thumaru, which gets you to your first level of Chalice Dungeons. Keep sitting down, I hate that amount. Um, in case you ran out of antidotes, there are some here. So you will most likely die a few times as you're learning his jumps and his bounces around, so just basically, um, you know, even if you run out of insight, uh, he's not that hard. You can, um, if you are struggling, you can start using the corners. Uh, I'll just demonstrate here what you can do. So you put a, a pungent blood cocktail on your bar, 
and if you throw it in a corner like that, he will go and he will run to that and he'll face the corner. And you can usually get behind him and do a charged attack and get a visceral on him. But if you uh, follow steps were taken, it will be a little bit of frustration for you, but you will be successful. Um, if you've beaten Father Gascoin, you're you're ready for just about any boss uh, for the first, uh, you know, first, I'd say, 25% of the game. So uh, that skill gate was necessary for you to grow as a player. Uh, let's go ahead well, and use our levels. Very well, let so, keep these as even as possible. And there we are. So, we have made our way through the Blood Starved Beast. Congratulations, and we will see you next time as Bloodburner 412 does the complete walkthrough of Bloodborne.